Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Avid Nexus Shared Storage for Houses of Worship. Uh, my name is Kevin Usher. I'm a director in the product marketing team at Avid. And uh, most of my um, sort of time today is to talk to you about Avid Nexus Storage. Now, um, we're going to do uh, run a short video, first of all, to give you a little bit of background information about Avid Storage. And I'm going to walk through uh, a short presentation about some of the capabilities and functions of the Nexus Storage. And then we're going to run a demo um, of Avid Nexus Shared Storage with a number of creative clients connected. So we can show you how uh, Nexus works in a collaborative and shared storage environment. So let's play the video. Nexus is such a huge part of our success because the efficiencies and the speed and the flexibility, that's just a massive game changer and continues, I think, to be a competitive advantage. The world is rapidly changing. Now, in addition to working together in an on-premises production environment, cloud-enabled workflows and remote collaboration are becoming more essential to keep your business operational and relevant. Demand for content continues to skyrocket, as does viewer consumption across multiple screens, and your media storage must adapt to your new requirements. Whether you're creating content for feature films, TV, online, or broadcast news, your team needs the ability to work collaboratively, regardless of their location, to deliver it fast. Avid Nexus leads the media industry with the most comprehensive solution for tiered media storage, on-premises, and all the way to the cloud. You can enable hundreds of editors, assistants, journalists, producers, and other contributors to work together in real time using Avid Nexus, integrated seamlessly with Avid Media Composer, Editorial Management, and Media Central. Expand your workflows on Avid Nexus with other creative tools from companies including Adobe, Apple, Autodesk, Blackmagic Design, and others. Optimized to accelerate collaboration for high-quality production, teams can produce content faster and your business can achieve better efficiency and security across flash, online, nearline, and cloud storage tiers. And using Avid patented technology, you can quickly tailor and tune workspace capacity, performance, and drive protection to meet the latest challenges without disruption or downtime to the creative process. Avid Nexus, it's the media industry's most trusted storage solution. Well, that was the video. It's a nice introduction to Avid Nexus Shared Storage. Now, as we go through this presentation, uh, if you have any questions uh, throughout the course of the presentation, uh, we have Corey Tedro and Kent Peterson who created the uh, demo video for us. Uh, they're available to take any questions. So if you can use a Q&A function uh, in the, um, uh, the, the bar at the, uh, on the screen that you have in front of you, just ask the questions and Corey or uh, Kent or both of them will, will answer those questions for you. So the agenda for today is really just a quick introduction um, about who Avid is. Um, you know, there may be some people on the call who are unfamiliar with Avid, maybe uh, you don't know too much about us, maybe you know a lot about us. Uh, we, we would like to think so, we'd like to hope so. And we want to look at some of the workflow challenges where shared storage is gonna make a big, big difference in the way you work today. Um, Quick overview of Avid Nexus Shared Storage. So we'll go into a little bit more detail about the, the product and uh, some of the, um, within the Nexus family, there are a range of different solutions depending on the size, the performance, the kind of workflow that you're looking to uh, implement. Um, and then we're gonna show you the, the demo video that uh, Corey and uh, Kenneth put together. And then we'll quickly wrap up at the end and answer any questions that might be outstanding. So uh, let's move on. So if you're not familiar with Avid, we've been in the media and entertainment market now for quite a number of years now. And actually we were the first company to develop a non-linear editing system. So 30 years or more ago, when people were still editing on videotape, Avid really broke this new ground by developing this new non-linear editing technology. 
but obviously technology and the industry has moved on significantly over the last 30 years. And so the whole portfolio of Avid products, both video and audio, um, has completely changed. So we're no longer shipping, delivering, providing individual editing solutions. We're providing complete end-to-end -end or start-to-finish uh, production solutions. And these will uh, impact whether it's film or television, music, uh, houses of worship, any kind of application where there's going to be video and audio um, that requires some kind of um, mechanism for editing the, the content and then delivering the content. So we're developing collaborative tools, not just around shared storage, but around asset management systems uh, and around the whole workflow that you can possibly imagine for video um, and audio production. And this all actually in the center of all this is, is having access to the shared storage system. So when we think about some of the workflow challenges for, for media production, uh, particularly video production, quite often some of the feedback that we get from, from customers that we speak to, they tell us that the, the storage solution that they have today isn't keeping pace with the demand that they, they have on their, on their operation or their business. And this could be they need more performance. Maybe they're, they're moving from HD to 4K or something higher than that. Uh, maybe they need to add more users uh, connected to the system. But basically, the solution they have really isn't fulfilling all their uh, requirements. They also work with a different range of creative tools. So it doesn't have to be Avid Media Composer or Avid Pro Tools. It could be Blackmagic Resolve, could be Adobe um, uh, Premiere Pro uh, or uh, FCP. So we can support a whole range of different connected users on the uh, Avid Nexus storage system. And quite often people are still using locally attached uh, disk drives to their editing systems or even internal disk drives. And these are not really very friendly insofar as you can, you can not easily share content between several different people who are working collaboratively on the same, same project. So moving away from locally attached disks to a collaborative shared storage solution really is the direction that um, most of our customers are, are moving towards. And if you only have um, local disk drives, you, you can't really easily share content. So you have to copy, you have to send, you have to deliver, and you end up with multiple copies of media uh, around your facility. And quite often, you know, you may not be able to figure out, find out which is the current version. So again, keeping all that material, all those media assets in one central storage repository will help you uh, manage the content uh, far more efficiently and everybody connected to that shared storage system can actually work on the same piece of media at the same time. So if we, if we just look at a very simple example already, this obviously just showing, you know, locally attached disk drives to a nonlinear editor, content is stored on that local drive, but unfortunately there's no media sharing. Uh, if you want to share that content with another uh, colleague or with a, another user, um, you have to effectively copy it. So then you end up with another copy of the original media. So not only is that slow, it's very inefficient. Um, multiple copies of media on multiple disk drives. Uh, it's very easy to uh, misplace or lose the drive. And also locally attached disk drives may not necessarily always have any uh, inherent media protection. So um, it could just be you know, a, a standard disk drive that you from local store, connect it, store your media, you can edit off it. But if something goes wrong with that disk, you're going to lose your project, you're going to lose your media. So in, in the ideal world, what you really want to move towards is to connect those creative tools to a centralized storage system like Avid Nexus, where it will enable media sharing. Um, you have no media copying, so you can have one piece of uh, material, one media asset that can be shared by everybody on the shared storage system at the same time. Um, plus, inherent within the shared storage system, you can have protection mechanisms for the media. So it's not just protected through um, uh, hardware protection where you have redundant components in hardware architecture, but you also have redundancy in the media protection. So you can actually protect from multiple drive failures uh, in the shared storage system. So it's actually a very um, resilient system. So it allows you then to have um, much more confidence about the uh, reliability and the longevity of the system uh, in the longer term. 
So as we look at some of the requirements for shared storage systems, um, today, you know, 4K is everywhere. Is you know, a couple of years ago, um, production houses, companies, anybody creating content was moving from HD to UHD and 4K and 8K and beyond were kind of sort of in the future. Um, but quite often now we're seeing 4K as a mainstream media format now. And so any storage system um, has to support these higher resolution uh, formats that we see today. Um, but they also must do it you know, seamlessly. You know, you can have multiple people sharing 4K media at the same time. Uh, that's impossible to do with a locally attached disk drive. We want to support different workflows. I mean, the shared storage system, you know, you could still be working in, a, in an offline, online editing environment. Um, you could be working on finishing components where high resolution is essential. You could be working on VFX. So the shared storage system has to be very flexible, very versatile in supporting different workflows. So whether you're working in uh, post-production, whether you're working in broadcast, Whatever your um, application is for the shared storage, it must be able to, to uh, not only store your content, but allow you to, to work with um, multiple users connected to the shared storage, sharing that media. And it has to be flexible enough to support multiple different creative ap applications, whether it's uh, Avid Media Composer, for example, or Avid Pro Tools, through to uh, Autodesk, Grass Valley, FCP, Adobe, and multiple others. So the ability to support both Windows and Mac and Linux clients is something that actually the system needs to support as well. And it needs to work in real time. And it's often misunderstood what we mean by real time. Well, video and audio are real time applications. You know, if you press the play button on your creative tool, you want it to play instantaneously. You don't want it to pause and delay. Um, and uh, you know, play back after a few frames or a few seconds. So any shared storage system uh, designed for media workflows has to be real time uh, as, as, as a kind of main feature of the solution because you can have um, many, many clients working on the shared storage system and really they all, all the connected users have to work in real time. So our solution um, for media workflows in shared storage is called Avid Nexus. And this solution is a combination of a file system, a real-time file system that Avid has developed. Uh, it's integrated with um, hardware, uh, which is actually, it's, it's commercially available hardware, but we pre-integrate the file system with the hardware. We do a lot of testing in terms of performance testing, scale testing, reliability testing. So we deliver this as a, as a complete integrated system, but it's optimized for video and audio workflows. Designed to accelerate your media workflow. So if you have many users, creative teams uh, connected to this system, you need to su support them all at the same time. It's not like having, um, many different creative teams working with individual disk drives and copy media around the systems. Uh, we, can, we can move the media, copy the media, transfer the media, ingest the media into the shared storage system and everybody who has access privileges can see that media. And it's also designed to scale. So you can start quite small with a, with a, with a single Avid Nexus storage engine to support to 24 users, but we can scale up to hundreds of connected users uh, typically, that's in a more of a broadcast or enterprise environment where you're going to have bigger, bigger teams. Um, but certainly the Avid Nexus system is designed to actually support any size um, uh, production team, you know, whether it's just two users all the way up to 330. And inherently within the hardware and software, we've architected and designed the system to provide very, very high levels of resilience and redundancy in the hardware and in the software. So the storage family from Nexus is, is actually several different things. So as you see in this particular slide here, um, we have this concept called tiered storage where if you imagine a pyramid, uh, the peak of the pyramid there, we have this um, SSD or flash storage. Now this is the fastest storage that we can deliver. And it's really designed for those extremely high performance 
applications like finishing VFX and grading. Um, and so as we go down to the next tier down, this is more hard disk drive based um, storage, different size storage engines um, that can support different capacity and different user connections. So for example, with Nexus Pro, it has in, internally within it up to 40 terabytes of storage, but you can stack a number of Nexus Pro systems to create a bigger system. And then we go into what we call the Nexus E series or the enterprise series. And we have different combinations of E-series engines, depending on what your capacity and performance requirements are going to be. And these engines in the E-series can all be mixed together as well. So you, you can start off, for example, with a, a Nexus E2 here. Uh, and then sometime in the future, as your business expands, you can maybe add an E4 or even an E5 or even an E2 SSD engine. So very versatile, a very flexible architecture. So we can um, consider your, your needs today and we'll be aware that you can expand or increase the capacity or increase the performance of the system as you go forward, as your needs change. We also have another tier of storage, um, nearline storage. Now this comes in two, two forms. So one is the E5NL, which is um, a very high density storage engine. Um, and actually in, in that engine, it's, it's a five rack unit storage engine and we can have over a petabyte of uh, nearline capacity just in that one engine. So obviously when you, when you stack a number of these together, you can be into multiple petabytes of nearline storage. But we also have another solution, which is um, integrated with the file system, the Nexus file system called Cloud Spaces. So um, you can subscribe to a certain amount of storage in the cloud and the Nexus file system will enable you to um, create different storage spaces in the cloud and on your on-premise storage and allow you to copy media and projects up to the cloud spaces. Um, it's, it's there for redundancy purposes, for backup purposes. And there's also some in, inherent capabilities where if you're using cloud spaces, the file system will automatically back up the total system metadata multiple times through the day. So you always have additional levels of redundancy. Now, what we're showing here is storage hardware that would reside inside your facility, inside your premises. But we also have Nexus systems that can be deployed in the cloud. And we've partnered with Microsoft and Microsoft, uh, specifically Azure, where we've integrated the Nexus file system with the Azure storage. So we can actually build production solutions with edit, edit systems like Media Composer in the cloud. So you don't necessarily have to have on-premises hardware now. So you can deploy um, you know, in a system entirely in the cloud, um, working with Avid Nexus. They have a Nexus file system. Or you can have a hybrid. You could have hardware on-premise and you could work with cloud spaces. Um, there's a number of different solutions that we'll show you in a moment. Now, there, there are certain key attributes of the Nexus system which are differentiated from other shared storage systems. Um, these are just some of them. So as we, as we look at the way the um, media industry is changing over the, over the last year and a half through, through COVID and the pandemic, as more and more people have had to work remotely, we've been developing uh, remote collaboration solutions with Nexus now for quite some time, for a couple of years or more actually, um, in conjunction with other Avid solutions as well. So remote collaboration for Avid is actually something that's inherent or embedded with, within many of our creative tools and our applications like storage, Media Composer, uh, Pro Tools, et cetera. We also have um, some patented technology in the Nexus file system. So when I talked about uh, real-time performance, uh, where we have you know, many hundreds of users connected to the shared storage system, all needing to work in collaboration, sharing content, but working in real time, there are certain uh, features within inside the file system that enables us to uh, support that kind of scaling. And they're called media due times. It's actually a mechanism that we have in the file system that allows us to um, guarantee that we can deliver the media when it's needed to, the, to that uh, end user. We have different uh, levels of media protection, whether it's protection from 
hardware failures like power supply or drive failures. We have multiple levels of hardware protection. But we also have software protection as well, where you've seen in the demo that we can create these um, virtual storage workspaces that you can allocate to individual users. Now, these workspaces are virtual amounts of Nexus storage. And you can, you can allocate a different level of media protection um, on each workspace. So it's actually a very flexible arrangement. So, you know, obviously, if you, if you have the media protected, uh, maybe on other devices, maybe you don't need to give the media on the Nexus system the highest level of media protection. Maybe if you only have one level of media, uh, I think about one, um, one uh, media um, file, it's not stored anywhere else, you have to give that media on Nexus the highest level of protection. So it's a very flexible protection arrangement. Um, one of the significant capabilities that we have at Avid is to do uh, qualification and scale testing, not just for Avid storage, Avid applications, but also partner applications as well. So we have um, multiple labs for testing storage, but we also have this thing called a scalar lab, which is a permanent um, configuration. It has over 300, um, a mix of 300 uh, Windows um, and Apple uh, devices connected to it, all connected to the biggest shared storage system that we've shipped today. And that's where we do all our qualification scale testing. And that's a permanent arrangement. And that's actually probably the only um, system of its type um, in the industry. I, I'm not aware of anybody else that has anything like this capability for doing scale testing. So when we do, um, for example, if we sell a system to a broadcaster that requires 300 users, um, then we will test 300 users. And it becomes a permanent feature of the testing. It's continuous. Every time we come out with a new software release, we'll go back through and we'll test up to 300 users or, or even more if it's needed. It's optimized to deliver the highest performance. So it was designed from the outset to support 4K or UHD, 4K, 8K, or even higher. So, you know, Nexus will scale with your business. If you if you start today with uh, HD and you want to move to 4K, absolutely Nexus will support that to you. The Nexus system, as we mentioned, will work with third-party systems, third-party applications. We've touched on some of those already, and you can see here on this slide, you know, that they, they can all reside on Nexus at the same time. But we also have the uh, remote capability as well. And, you know, if you have um, colleagues or teams who are working remotely, there are mechanisms that we have within our products to allow us to connect those um, teams and remote collaborators to the Nexus system that could be on-premise. Or, frankly, you know, the whole production system could be in the cloud. These remote users could be connected into some Nexus cloud storage as well. Now, these are the, the three different deploy mo deployment models I'm going to show you now. The first one is the on-premise one where we have the Nexus hardware uh, inside your facility. It's in the racks inside your technical uh, area, and the editing clients connect to that or the creative clients connect to that. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, we've deployed thousands of these around the world. Um, we've, we've been shipping this solution called uh, Avid Edit On Demand for uh, over a year now. I think that might be a little bit more. Um, where, again, we've integrated the Nexus file system with Microsoft Azure Storage. And we're offering this uh, on-demand solution. It's basically a subscription-based. Uh, and you can have virtual media composers in the cloud on virtual machines um, with Nexus and Azure Store or Nexus file system and Azure storage. And you have a complete production uh, system in the cloud. That's called edit on demand. And finally, for the larger configurations where we have some customers who you know, have um, facilities around the world and they want to connect them all together, they want to try to bring everybody uh, to move away effective from having individual on-premise systems, having one cloud solution that's common to everybody. And this is called having Nexus Cloud. So as you can see from this slide here, we have multiple different ways of deploying Avid Nexus, whether it's on-premise all the way through to the cloud. So just summarizing some of the things we've talked about, Avid Nexus and Shared Storage is designed to help you collaborate on common projects. 
it will support higher resolution content. So if you want to work with 4K, absolutely Avid Nexus will enable you to do that. It gives you a, um, a shared pool of media content. Um, we still have customers who have lots of content on individual disk drives, on shelves, uh, can't be shared. It's very difficult to track and find out where the material is. So actually having a, a common pool of storage enables you to actually easily or manage and give access to every user on the system to that content. And delivering content faster and more efficiently. Well, if you're all collaborating on the same shared storage system, it is inherently going to be faster. So we're going to move on next to um, a demo video that Corey and uh, Kent have created for us to show you an Nexus system that has several clients connected to it, uh, Adobe, Media Composer, and Pro Tools. And we're going to show you a little bit about how that collaboration actually works. So let's roll the video. Hi, my name is Kent Peterson. I'm a Senior Solution Specialist for Avid Technology. Today, we're going to go over Avid Nexus and how it works with with different applications, whether it's our Media Composer platform or whether it's Adobe Premiere or Pro Tools. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the dashboard of our Nexus storage that we're connected to. This is basically showing you the performance on the system right now, what machines are connected to it, how much storage has actually been allocated, um, and how much is available and the different versions of the, the version basically of the software that's been installed on it. But to make it really simple, I'm just gonna go here and go into storages. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a workspace for this project today. So what a workspace is, is basically a mount point that will mount on the different computers and everyone will have access to it. So as you can see right now, I have several already on the system, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new one. So we're gonna call this Setzer. And at this point in time, let's just actually spell this word, right? At this point in time, this is where we actually designate what kind of protection this storage group is gonna actually have. So this workspace has a choice of being unprotected, one disk protection or two disk protection. So in my case, I'm just gonna say one disk protection and then we'll just put it at 100 gigs of storage. And then what I need to do is I want to go and designate or give access to this workspace. So Corey Tedro is going to be helping me today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to her user here and I'm going to go and give her read write capabilities. I can go and create user groups in here. So I can have an editor group with a whole bunch of editors if I wanted to and assign them that way as well. But here I'm going to give her read write access. I'm going to hit save and it's automatically been created. So you can see at the bottom of the list here, it's got one disk protection. So it's kind of like a RAID 5. So I can lose one disk in this particular group of storage. So I know that it's protected. Now, the nice thing about this also is the fact that we don't have to have every workspace have protection. So it frees up additional space. I don't have to go and predetermine this at the very beginning of the whole setup. Now, just to really quickly, I just want to go over to the users so there's where Corey was created originally. Like I mentioned before, you can have different groups and inside those groups, I can go and add different people. So if I wanna add Corey to this editors group, I just do it like that. And then at the same time, I could go and pick the workspaces. So there's not a specific order you have to do this in where I have to create workspaces first and then users. I can do users first and then add workspaces, any combination of that. So with that said, we've created this workspace. We've given Corey access to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over to Corey now and Corey's gonna show you how it's represented on the computer that she's using and we'll start using this in, in our little demo here. Okay, thanks Kent. So I'm just gonna launch uh, the Nexus Client Manager here on my Mac system. I'm on one of the latest and greatest uh, Mac work, workstations here. And I first need to connect to my Nexus. So this is the, I have access to multiple Nexuses, but, uh, or Nexi. This is the one that Kent has given me uh, a new workspace on. So I'm going to connect to this and there's my workspace. 
I'm going to mount this and now you'll be able to see it here on my, here it is on my desktop here. It's important to note that this client manager here is something that I'm showing you so you understand uh, that it's there and exists and, you, and you, you utilize this to connect to your Nexus and to mount workspaces. But in a typical environment, your end users would never deal with this. You would have it set up so that it would auto connect to a Nexus based on their login and it would auto mount their workspaces based on their permissions. So. Uh, you would sort of take that um, possible uh, human error in terms of, you know, your editor logging on and forgetting to mount their workspaces. That's uh, not something that would occur because you would typically set this up to auto connect and auto mount workspaces. But we just wanted to show you it so you understand uh, what it is and how it works. So we'll hide that. And so let's pretend, okay, I'm regular user just logged onto my Mac and my workspace that Kent gave me access to is now here. I have some um, multicam files from a Brian Setzer um, performance. I'm going to just drag and copy these over to the uh, workspace. So now they are available to, uh, they will be available to everyone and anyone that has access to this workspace. So I'm just moving them from my desktop. And while that's happening, I'm going to launch up Avid Media Composer, and I'm going to create a new project on this same workspace so that everyone uh, who is working in the project will have access to it on the Nexus system. So Media Composer is designed with collaboration in mind in that uh, the project files and the bins are all uh, easily shared between multiple editors. So I'm going to choose my Nexus workspace here. So here is uh, the workspace. I'm just going to choose that as my uh, location for creating a new project. I will give my project a name. Uh, we'll call it sets or multicam. And choose what my deliverable format is going to be and create it okay now i just need to bring in my footage you can do that pretty easily just with my source browser so i will open up the source browser and navigate to the files that i just copied on there so here are my files I'm going to link to them. I don't need to do anything other than to just point to them. And then there they are in my bin. I can close the source browser and we'll see. Uh, there are my files. Okay. And I can load these up. And I can even start editing if I want. I'll make a sequence. Drag this to the timeline, and that automatic, automatically makes a sequence in my bin. And we'll call this rough cut, and there we go. And then I'll just hit save. So now at this point, um, I have uh, my clips and my timeline in my bin. You may or may not notice that there's a little green lock icon here at the top of the bin, and that is uh, for sharing. It's an indication that I have right access to the bin because the lock is green. Now, if I uh, option click on that, it might be hard to see, but it's actually turned blue. And you'll see at the very top, uh, or you may not be able to read it, but it says lock available. So what that means is that I can keep working out of this bin, so I can start loading other clips out of the bin and playing them back. Um, but someone else may want to start writing that bin. So for example, Kent can now open up that same bin and start working on the timeline. So I'm in, in the Media Composer project now that Corey is uh, set up on the Nexus workspace. And as you can see, I'm opening the exact same bin. I have access to you know all the media that she had done previously. I have the timeline that she she had done previously as well. She's released this bin to me. So basically it made it available for anybody that's in this project to take control or ownership over that bin. So if I click on here right now, it goes green for me. It will be red for Corey. So what that means is that she can't modify this bin. She has access to everything. 
on here, but you can't modify it. So I can go in if I want to, and you know, mark it in, for instance, an hour down here, and maybe we want to cut this into the timeline. So I'm building onto this sequence. Now I've done my part to here. I've basically just saved this up. I now have the capabilities of releasing this back in so that she can continue working on this bin as I do something else. So if I just click on here, I put it back to a blue state and then at her side, she'll now have the capabilities of clicking on it and taking control of that bin and continue on with the edit itself. Kent can keep working out of the bin. He can keep playing clips out of the bin. This just means that I have right access to it now. So if I want to add more clips and cut some uh, material into the same exact timeline, I can do that. So thus far, we've been showing you how you can collaborate with Media Composer and work simultaneously and collaborate with uh, multiple Media Composer systems. The fact of the matter is, though, that Nexus also works with lots and lots of third-party applications, for example, Adobe Premiere Pro. Now we're going to go back over to Kent, and Kent is going to show you how we can continue to work on the same project, even in Adobe Premiere. Okay, so I'm in the Adobe Premiere project now. As you can see, I've navigated to my Nexus workspace here. If I double click on any one of the clips, it loads up. If I hit play, it starts playing back. Now, if I want, what I can do is I can take these three shots here, we'll import them into Adobe Premiere, so they're within my project now. And why don't we just throw them into a multicam group here. So I'll just uh, drop it in here, we'll right click here, create a multi group, uh, multicam. So we'll group it by endpoint, hit OK. Now, if I navigate in here, I can double click and we have the four way split. So if I hit play here, it'll start to play this concert with all the cameras. Let's just move a little further here. So all these are coming off of the Nexus right now. Okay, so with that said, as you see here, we basically had Media Composer working with shared projects. We've now got Media Composer and Premiere running at the same time and uh, with no problems. But most importantly is that we're using the same media between all the different platforms. That's one of the beautiful things about using shared storage. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pass it back to Corey. We're going to just show you uh, basically, you know, Media Composer, the Premiere running, and then I have an actual Pro Tools session that's just playing at the same time too. Thanks, Kemp. I have a second Mac connected here that's running Pro Tools. I have the same exact workspace mounted that we've been working with here. I'm going to launch Pro Tools. We'll get into a session. I'm running this session right off of Nexus, right off that workspace. And we're also going to be working with the same multi-game footage off of Premiere and Media Composer. So Premiere and Media Composer are running the same multi-cam footage off of the same exact files off of Nexus. So we're going to select a portion here in Pro Tools. And now you'll see I have Pro Tools playing. I have Premiere playing and Media Composer playing. Again, Media Composer and Premiere are playing the same exact files while Pro Tools is running a session, all simultaneously off of Nexus. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Ken. Great demo. Um, so just want to sum up now uh, some of the sort of key uh, capabilities of Nexus as how it might affect you and, and your business. So having Nexus, it, it adapts quickly to your changing priorities for your business. So for example, as you uh, begin to uh, create more projects, more material, you need higher resolutions, you need more capacity. We can easily expand your Nexus system so you, you can start relatively small and grow as your needs um, demand. So it is one virtual pool of storage. So even, you, even though you may have uh, several or multiple physical storage systems, the way the file system works, it brings them all together into a pool of virtual storage. So um, you can have, you know, petabytes of storage in, in one virtual pool. But within that virtual pool of storage, you can create what Kent referred to as storage workspaces. And they can be assigned to projects, individuals, teams, and you have access permissions within the file system to access the content inside that workspace. So depending on your um, 
production, whether it's an on-premise, whether it's in the cloud, whether you've got teams work, working remotely or individuals re, uh, working remotely, you can access the assets inside Nexus um, from multiple uh, locations. So actually your ability to build a very flexible um, workflow, um, you know, previously maybe your remote collaborators had great difficulty connecting to their media and were unable to work remotely. Um, maybe you couldn't work with different um, platforms um, on your system. So Nexus will actually help you deliver all these things and enhance Nexus at the workflow that you have today. Very secure system. So we have, again, multiple levels of protection, both in hardware and software. Um, the, the, the management system for Avid Nexus is actually through a web browser. So it's actually a very simple system to manage. So from a day-to-day -day user uh, management perspective, it's pretty straightforward through a standard web browser. Uh, so you can manage the system remotely if that's uh, something that you need to do. We've put a lot of um, time and design effort into removing the complexity of the technology from the system. So this is designed for uh, non-technical people to manage. You don't have to be an engineer to be able to manage uh, and create users, for example, and set up different workspaces on the system. You can just be you know, one of the creative teams or one of the uh, production staff can actually manage this system with a bit of training. Um, put a lot of design uh, time into um, architecting the system and design the system to give it that absolute optimal performance we can provide in a very small physical footprint. So if you, if you compare the Nexus system with previous generations of, of storage, you'll find that actually for, for a smaller Nexus physical footprint, fewer number of disks, we can actually deliver much, much higher performance. And that actually has all kinds of benefits. It reduces the, the overall cost of the system um, that you're purchasing because you need fewer disks for a higher performance. Uh, you can get more users connected to it. You can work in high performance, et cetera. And also with the new Nexus file system, being able to integrate with cloud storage with um, uh, Avid uh, Edit On Demand and the um, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Azure storage, our ability to add remote collaboration and connectivity to your on-premises or your cloud systems is all part of the, the Nexus solution. So as you can see from this, um, we have a very flexible shared storage system. Um, if you're working with local disk drives today, the, the step into shared storage actually is, is a huge improvement in your workflow and will make your business so much more efficient and, and so much more flexible. So on that uh, note, I think we can, we can end the, the presentation now um, and just actually take questions. Um, I don't know if we have any questions in the chat, in the Q&A. Um, let's just have a quick look. Yeah, Kevin, we've been uh, fielding lots of questions throughout the presentation. Um, so one common uh, question that we've answered a couple of times is just about uh, sort of a couple of themes. We've had a lot of questions about just clarifying that uh, you can have multiple people sharing the same workspace simultaneously, if that wasn't clear. Uh, you can give multiple clients and users access to the same workspace. Um, so that was one question. And the other thing that has come up is just clarifying, um, maybe you could talk Kevin about the different platforms and operating systems that are supported uh, currently on Nexus? Oh. So the, the first question, when we, when we create a virtual workspace um, in, with the Nexus file system, just so you log into the Nexus file system and there, there, there is a, a little tab that says create workspace. So when you create a workspace for the first time or even after the fact, you can assign a certain, or you can allocate a certain amount of capacity to that workspace. And in addition to assigning the workspace size, you can also um, um, allow access privileges for different users on the system to that particular workspace. So for example, we've got Corey, got Kevin, uh, we've got Ken. You know, if we have several other people that needed access to this workspace, I can provide them with access permissions to the content in that workspace. Now, at the moment, we have uh, read only, so I can play back or, uh, you know, I can uh, use the media, but I can't 
actually write to that workspace. So we have read access, we have no access, and we have full read write access. So if you need complete uh, access to the workspace so you can actually add more content into it or you want, you want to edit it or something like that. So within the file system and the system management console, uh, we have the capability workspace by workspace to um, allow different users to ac access different uh, workspaces. And they're all, um, they're actually managed by the system administrator, but we're actually about to release an entirely new feature, which uh, allows you to have sub administration privileges. So you have the ability to have multiple teams connected to uh, the um, Nexus shared storage. So, you know, depending on, you know, the environment, the number of people you have connected, you don't have to have everybody connecting to one individual workspace. You can have, I think it's up to 3000 different workspaces with different user permissions. But we can also um, break them down into groups as well. So we can have a team or a group of people uh, allocated with the group permissions to that workspace. So we've got a lot of flexibility in terms of user access privileges. Um, what was the other question, uh, so, Corey? Uh, yeah, I'll jump in. So the, um, the other question was about, um, that I just wanted to highlight was about uh, supported uh, platforms and operating systems. Yeah, and thank you. Um, there's two other things, I'll, uh, so I'll just cover that because there's a couple other things that have come in. Um, so as you saw in the demo, we support both um, uh, Windows and uh, Mac platforms. We support Linux clients and we support all of those uh, clients in uh, uh, simultaneously. So you can have different platforms uh, uh, connected at the same time with different clients and we do have customers doing that. Um, there've been a lot of questions about editing remotely. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, because uh, there's a lot of different ways to, to edit remotely with uh, a Nexus shared storage system. Um, we have the ability to um, uh, work in, in uh, edit on demand, which uh, utilizes Nexus in the cloud. And that is um, basically having virtual media composers on a virtual Nexus hosted in Azure. And that is uh, one way of editing remotely. Um, we have a lot of clients, however, uh, that are working with a, a physical nexus in their facility and uh, have physical editing clients connected to that nexus inside their facility and then their editors are at their homes and they're remoting in with different types of um, tools uh, like RGS um, or just basically different um, applications that let you remotely com control a computer, okay? So that's sort of like the, the, um, what a lot of people are doing. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to clarify, we've talked, people have asked about having remote access to your Nexus. And there is a way to access a Nexus workspace uh, from home, but um, it is that functionality or that feature is not uh, designed for editing from home, okay? So the two things I talked about previously are ways that you can edit from home. Uh, there is a way to you know, push media or copy things onto your Nexus from your house or from your home or from remotely. Uh, but that feature is not designed to work um, in full-blown editing capacity. And then I'll, I'll hand this to Ken because I have a feeling he wants to follow up on something. But I also want to point out um, separately that this whole webinar is going to be um, sent out. Uh, a link to everyone that joined is going to get a link to the recorded webinar. Okay, so just FYI on that. Uh, yeah, I didn't really have anything other than I have had a couple questions where people have asked about, you know, how do you get the media from wherever you might be up to, for instance, a cloud storage, um, like Nexus in the cloud. And so there's different ways of doing it. Uh, there's obviously accelerators like File Catalyst is one of the ones that we use for our edit on demand system. Uh, which basically allows you to have like watch folders on your computer and you can just drop content in there and it will fire, fire it up and put it onto workspaces automatically. Um, so that is one way of doing that. If you go down the paths of Dropbox and Google Drive and iCloud and all that kind of stuff, something has to, you know, pull it from that uh, particular drive and move it over to the workspace. I think the important thing to understand is the Nexus workspaces, right? They're just like Picture it as you're plugging in a USB drive uh, into your computer, right? How do I get content onto that USB drive? 
And that's basically the same thing that the Nexus is giving you. It's just giving you a mount point on a machine that allows you to copy to it. So however you can copy to a drive is how you can get it either into the cloud or you can get it into your on-prem Nexus. So that's pretty much all I had to say on that point. Um, so Kevin, there is a, this is kind of a perfect wrap up question. Uh, what would be the specific advantages of Nexus over other video specific shared storage systems? Well, there's that, that, that it's a good question because actually, you know, when you look at different, um, different storage systems and you compare them side by side, they all sound as if they do the same thing. And it's kind of only when you get into the detail of it. So some of it could come down to ease of management. What management tools do they have? How, how easy is it to manage the system? Is it um, designed for an engineer or is it designed for somebody in the production team? Um, Nexus has multiple levels of software redundancy in the file system. Um, many other storage systems, you know, when you configure the system, you, you only have one level of protection. Um, so for every workspace you create on that system, it's the same level of protection. Whereas with, with Nexus, we can have uh, one drive protection, which is uh, similar to RAID 5. We can have two drive protection, which is similar to RAID 6. We also have mirror solutions as well. So within Nexus, we have actually, you know, the protection can scale depending on the type of uh, level of um, protection that you you need, uh, you know, for your business or for that project or for that media. Um, we also have, I mentioned, they touched on earlier, you know, we have the inherent patented technology in the file system that allows us to manage the delivery of content in real time to everybody on the system. And we also go through, you know, one of the more extensive things that we do in terms of testing the scalability, uh, reliability, the quality of the product is this continuous scale testing lab that we have. Um, now, we, we, the largest system that we've de deployed is 331 connected clients. Now, um, other storage vendors tend to talk about, yes, we can support a large number of users, but they can't test every connected user the way we can, we do regularly. So we go through some pretty extensive testing procedures and, and we have invested a huge amount of time and resource into that particular process. Because when we release a software version to customers, we want to be absolutely certain that we've done that scale testing because when it goes to that customer that has 331 active users, you know that software install and update has to be perfect. You know, we can't be suffering problems when we do that install. So scale testing, performance testing, testing of different platforms and different applications is, is something that we invest in significantly. Uh, I will add to that just um, from, I talked to lots of customers that use Nexus and have used our previous shared storage solutions. And just in simple terms, I think uh, Nexus is just reliable and it's easy. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think, um, a lot of third-party storages uh, are hard to manage. You have to spend a lot of time figuring out how to how to get it to work, um, and uh, that's not the case with Nexus. Uh, Nexus is also designed for minimal downtime. So anything and everything that could happen with your shared storage or that you need to do with your shared storage, we've designed it so that you can keep working and editing um, without ever having to shut down your Nexus. So it's just extremely flexible, um, and these are things that it's sort of hard to quantify. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's um, going to just save you dollars and time and headaches. Uh, it's super flexible. I mean, I seriously, I talk to people that are like, I don't know, where is the Nexus still on? You know, like they're just, they don't ever shut it. They never touch it because it just works so well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it's very, it's, it's very um, flexible and reliable. Um, in terms of specific, there've been a lot of questions about Pro Tools specifically, and I'm, I'm feeling like we should have had a Pro Tools person <laughs> on this webinar to answer some of those. But um, uh, for th those of you that have had specific questions, I'm gonna get you in touch with an, an audio specialist to answer them. But what I will say in terms of, um, I have to be honest, one of the benefits of utilizing Nexus when you're working with Pro Tools is the collaboration within Media Composer, being able to um, work with Media Composer and Pro Tools on the same shared storage and playing your files without having to uh, move them around and push them off of the Nexus is definitely a benefit. Um, but again, anyone um, that has specific questions that weren't answered, uh, 
uh, corey.tedrow.avid.com. I've already given my email to a couple of you, but please uh, send me an email and I can uh, make sure that uh, I get your questions answered. Okay. Are, are there any specific protos and Nexus questions, you know, in terms of, is it, are they more to do with workflow or is it integration with Nexus or are they, are they more deeper audio uh, related questions? I think most of the questions were about um, can, you know, in terms of the workflow, can you run um, full sessions? Are there any limitations in terms of how you run Pro Tools on Nexus in terms of your sessions um, and things like that? Th there's a really great document on the Avid Knowledge Center, actually, that, that outlines some of the testing that we've done with Pro Tools, multiple Pro Tools clients and uh, track counts, session sizes, that kind of thing, which... Um, it's it, it does need updating, but it but it's actually a really useful grounding sort of paper that will give you some further details about what what we've tested um, with Pro Tools and Nexus. Now I have to add a caveat to that in that um, when we did the testing, it was it wasn't a large number of Pro Tools connected uh, a large number of connected Pro Tools clients. We have deployed quite a number of Nexus systems with many, many Pro Tools clients connected to them and so, some quite extensive ones. So, you know, although what's on the Knowledge Center, it's really just use it as a guide. It's an indicator of some of the things that we've tested so far. But if you have some specific questions, then of course, you know, we'd, we'd be only too happy to take those questions and, and answer them. Yeah, just to uh, comment on that too, is that we just uh, recently did a large uh, deal to a Pro Tools customer that has many, many, uh, I think we're up in over 20 suites with mixed studios and everything um, on Nexus. So um, we have a lot of uh, information to help with uh, any help that you guys need with uh, putting Pro Tools on Nexus, how it works and so forth. It's uh, pretty simple to put it on. It's very easy to work off of, just like it is with the Media Composer when it comes to that portion. Yeah, I, I mean, I know of a system in, in, in Russia that's got 30 Pro Tools clients on it, and, and there are some bigger ones than that. So it, it's, but, you know, I, I think it's important that if we just take those questions and we go through them one at a time, make sure that we answer them to the detail that um, that's needed. One thing I just want to comment too on, uh, just with regards to Nexus, just in general too, um, that we didn't mention is that we build in more and more functionality with Media Composer all the time with regards to the shared project side of things. It's just inherited automatically when you purchase a Nexus. And if you happen to be a Media Composer uh, customer, uh, we have additional features where the third parties don't have access to that uh, capabilities. They have basic project sharing uh, through the Media Composer. However, we've been adding more and more as we've been moving along with syncing of bins and all that kind of stuff too. So more to come in the future as well on that side of things. Well, thank you, Kent. Thank you, Corey. And I'd, I'd like to thank everybody that's joined us today for, for this webinar. And uh, have yourself a great day. And thank you again. Thank you.